Hey guys, it's Rockin' Robbie here. Um, decided to switch gears a little bit with this video. Um, we're gonna be, today we're gonna be changing um, a couple of 11R225 radial steer tires on this uh, international truck. And I thought, hey, you know, there's not a whole lot of how-to videos for anybody that wants to try and do it themselves. And now, that being said, I'm not saying go do this yourself, like, you got to have some knowledge of what you're doing. If you go and do this, follow the steps in the video, you should be all right. But if you get hurt, that's on you, not this guy. So do it at your own risk. So with that being said, let's get started. So with these right here, see these chrome nuts? These are little chrome covers. <clears throat> so they do make a special pair of pliers for this. Like they're rubber coated. Oh, hang on. They're rubber coated jaws on them or whatever and they just grab on and you can pull them i don't have a set of those i just got a pair of slip joints but what i've done is taped up the jaws so that it's not going to scratch the piss out of them right okay so all you do is you come in here i'm gonna open up my pliers just to just to touch more just grab them like so give a little squeeze and wiggle Oh, those haven't been off in a while. All right, so there, all the uh, covers are off. The next step, if you're working on a shop with a cement floor, grab your broom, give her a quick sweep. It'll make your life a lot easier. If you're not working in a shop with a cement floor, you're gonna want a piece of cardboard or a piece of plywood to lay down so that when you take them rims off, you have something to lay them on flat and you're not gonna get dirt in on the tires and in the beads. That's very important. So let's go on to the next step, which is get this thing up in the air. Uh, in this case, I'm using two um, air jacks. And um, yeah, so we're just gonna get it up off the ground here. You wanna kind of keep it level. All right, so the next step, not always necessary, but for these trucks that travel a lot of gravel, there's a lot of dirt on these. And if you just spray the oil or lube or something on there, that dirt's gonna stick there. So I like to come along with a blow gun. Grab whatever you got laying around for spray lube. So WD-40, 1234, deep creep, you know, whatever you got, doesn't matter. Okay, so we've got the one inch impact gun here. It's an Ingersoll Rand. Doesn't matter what you got, whether it's a, an old piece of crap you got laying around, doesn't matter. They all work. There we go. Make sure it's on reverse. All right, let's go. Okay, so now we got all the nuts off. Um, when you take them off, you want to keep them clean. So I like to set them up on the step or put them in a box. But you want to watch and make sure that they turn freely between the nut and the washer itself. If these are seized up, throw them away and get new ones. They're junk. They have to freely spin in there. And when you spray them with lube, so now when I go to put them on, I'm not going to spray the threads. I'm going to spray where that nut and washer contact and swivel. You want that free and, and lubed up for when you torque it. So once you get all your nuts off, you're just gonna pull the rim off like so, just like that there. And then this little cap here, just give it a little tap. Out it comes, set it aside for later. Now, you're gonna locate the valve stem, pull the cap off, then you're gonna find a core tool. So a core tool is a little skinny screwdriver looking thing, but the end has a slot in it. And the reason it's slotted is to remove the valve core. Now, this is a valve core 
I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, anyway, this core threads inside the valve stem. And that's what whole, it's a one, it's a one-way valve with a little spring-loaded valve in there. So this core tool then fits onto the core and you thread it out. It's right-hand threads, whatever. So you unscrew it and pew, out comes the cap. You let all the air out. So put the core tool in and you, you'll feel it like drop in and lock. Give it a spin. Okay, so once you got the cores removed and uh, you're gonna lay the tires down on the ground or on your on your plywood or your cardboard or whatever, and you're gonna want them dish, dish up. So the out, like these are steer tires, right? So the rim dishes up like this. You want that facing up first. You're gonna break this bead. Now, in order to break the bead, professionals use what's called a bead ax. So, this part of the, you swing the hammer and that part of the ax hits right there on the bead and uh, knocks it loose. If you don't have a bead ax laying around, a regular sledgehammer, that end, will work. Just be dang careful that you don't hit the rim. You wanna hit just the tire right there on the rim. And these are tapered beads, so, you know, a couple good, good wax on there and they'll, they'll come loose, right? So let's, uh, let's break the beads. So we'll break them both on this side and then uh, flip the tire over so it's dished down and break that bead. And then, uh, then we'll lube it up and take it off. And I'll, I'll show it. So we'll get started. Get from in here, just like that, bead is broken. like that, break the bead, and we're going to flip it up and over, and you always, yeah, dang it, just hang on, I'm going to sweep that dirt, because when I flop that dish side down, because these are sear tires, you're going to see that side, and if there's some rocks and dirt there, it's gonna scratch the face of that rim. Oh, I don't like to do that. So when you get when you flop it down, just give it a little spin. Nice and quiet. Not gonna wreck nothing. That both beads are broke, we're gonna lube it up. So for tight, there's a special uh, lube for taking tires on and off. In this case, so in this case, I have Bose Big Blue Tire Mounting Lube. Comes in a jug, you can see it's fairly thick it's uh it's water-based it's pretty pretty thick and goopy um i don't know what the heck it is i can't even pronounce what these are in here but uh it's basically soapy water is what you end up with just real thick soap i have done it with dish soap before it doesn't work the greatest but it does work but if you're gonna be doing tires go pick up a jug there's not that much right so this lube, some guys water it down, I don't. I just use it straight out of the jug. Pour it in my little container there, and away you go, right? So, I like to stand on the tire like this, get it away from the rim, take your little brush, get in there, and get lots of lube. You can't have too much, right? So, 
the more lube, the easier it's going to be. You lube the tire and rim like that. And you only, you can do two if you're fast, but it does dry out too, right? So. Uh, and I'll show you. Today we're going to be using a regular spoon bar. It's just a straight bar with a spoon shaped end and a little bend to it and what we call a gooseneck. So you've got a spoon on one end and then this is the gooseneck on the other end. Some guys call them S bars, whatever you want to call it. This and this together is all you need to take it on and off. So lube up the tire. Then stick your bars in, take one side, stick it in with that curve down and that little knob sticking up. You stick it right down in there because that knob hooks on the rim. Then you're going to stick your spoon bar in and then you're going to step exactly 100 or uh, yeah, 180 degrees from where you put the bars in, exactly across. You're going to step there and you're going to pull your bars like this. Then you're going to leave your S bar down, your gooseneck. You're going to pull your spoon bar out. Then you're going to go right back to where the uh, tire isn't off the rim yet, just over from where you just bit. And then you're going to go over it. And you're going to keep working your way around until that whole side of the tire is off. Okay? Then you're going to put your straight spoon bar down. You don't need it. Lift up on the tire, pull your gooseneck out. Then, this is where you gotta have a little bit of strength. You pick up the tire and the rim, get it standing straight up. Now, see how the rim is loose, hanging out here? Okay, so you're gonna make sure it's not pushed in, it's slid out as far as it can go, but the tire is still in the drop center at the bottom. Then you're gonna push the rim in just to here. Take your bar, curve side down again. You're gonna go in and you're gonna hook the rim. Maybe. Okay. Hook the rim. And you kinda of gotta go in sideways like this on an angle and then pull the bar straight. See that? How the bar is straight like that now. It's hooked on the rim, that little knob is touching the tire on the outside. Pull your bar straight and then you take a deep breath and you're going to lift up on this bar and pull the tire towards you and you're going to use the weight of the tire and rim to let it go. So all you do is just grab the bar good and strong here and you're going to push and pull like that. But And then you bounce a couple times and there you go. She's on. Steel rims will just fall apart. They won't give you any trouble. Aluminum rims, because they corrode, they, uh, they stick a bit. Sometimes you gotta bounce them a couple of times to get them apart. So there you go. You just dismounted the tire. So now, you're gonna repeat that same process for this tire, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so once you have both tires dismounted, now right here, see all this crud? There's black stuff is bits of tire, rubber still stuck. Well, you can see this shiny spot right here. That's where the tire's gonna seat and seal against. So this has to be cleaned because if this is corroded and pitted, the air will find it, its way through here and leak out. So what we're gonna do is take the wire wheel on the grinder and we're gonna polish this surface pretty much from here to here, all the way around the rim. We're gonna clean that up real nice. So as always, <clears throat> safety first, right? Get your, get your safety goggles on there, guys. And you're just gonna come along like this. So, 
once you have both surfaces polished, free of dirt and debris, I like to come in here and clean the mating surface inside here as well. Um, okay, so I uh, just tap this back and forth with the hammer, loosen it up so that it will come out. Then you take, I got a little fancy thing, just fits right in there to get rid of, maybe you just brush with a wire brush too, it's fine. The inside of the hole doesn't really matter much. It's the actually this face right here. You wanna make sure that that's good and clean. Cause that's actually where it seals. Okay. Now, the new stem here, a TR545D, and you can see how it's got that O-ring. So that's why it seals on the face here. That's why it's more important. So, first thing you do, hang on, is get this cap off. <clears throat> so you take the cap off, dust cap. Then you're going to take your core tool and pull the core out. And you're going to take this and you're going to pull the nut off like that. Stick it in the hole. And you're going to take the nut, and you're going to put it on. Oh. Let's see if I can do this. So you're going to take your wrench and tighten that up now, and you want to get it centered in the hole. So you gotta hold it there while you tighten it up. Okay. Okay, now that that's tightened up, you can go ahead and uh, get the tire ready to go on. <clears throat> okay, so take your tire, and I like to use 10 ounces of balance beads. I'm gonna throw them in there and get your Get your lube brush and your lube both sides, both beads up, good. And get it started. You're gonna take your one gooseneck bar. You're going to stick it in this way onto the rim and lift up. Put your foot in the rim. We got it. Like that. Okay. Okay. So this is the bead blaster. Charge it with air. When you hit the valve, it all comes out the end. Inflates the tire against the rim. Now, take your air hose, 
Take it on the valve. Now the reason you lay it flat, because it's a steer tire, with drive tires it doesn't matter as much, um, but steer tires it does, because you want it to, to sit 100% flush around the rim. Okay, so now we're just uh, airing, topping this up to max pressure. This one's rated for 120 PSI. This friggin' leaking thing. So I'm going to uh, actually take it up to 110. That's plenty of air. Then we'll put her on the truck. She's right there. Perfect. So now, um, yeah. put the cat back on. Stand her up. Now, you'll notice I turned the wheel a little bit to the right because now when I put this tire on, it's going to be angled a bit so that when I put the torque wrench on, I'm not over here brushing my knuckles against the hood and the bumper. I'm out here. And I got lots of room. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my trick here. Slide it in until you're just about lined up. And then you take a bar, you get around to the tire, you give it a lift, and there you go. That way you can, once you lift up, you can go right or left with the bar and get her lined up perfect. Just like that. Then take your nuts. Remember to check them, make sure that they swivel. Okay, so make sure it's on forward. Gonna hit one. Okay, so once you got those nuts all tightened up, you can come down and let your jack down. Put her away and then it's time to torque them up. And by torque them up, I mean use a big old torque wrench and a socket and we'll be torquing them to 500 foot pounds. Okay, we got my torque wrench here, inch and 516 socket, torque wrench is set to 500 foot pounds. And I'm just gonna lean on her until she clicks. And because I've already done the crisscross pattern with the impact, everything is tight and flush on here. I don't have to crisscross it with the torque wrench. Some guys say to do it, it's a lot easier to miss so I just start in one spot and then I go around and I double check. Pretty much go around until they stop moving. Then you know everything's tight. These little chrome devils here. See, you just go on. Stick them back on, do, 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 do. grab a rubber mallet or a, something soft. And... There you go. So 
So that is how you change 11L, 11R, 22.5 steering tires. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, share it out. Anybody that you know might need to, might want to save some money doing them themselves. Like farmer, whatever, you know, and send her out. Um, again, do this at your own risk. If you don't know what you, if you've never changed tires, you know, obviously you're not going to have the tools and whatnot. So, but if you know how to change a tire and you want to change your own semi tire, well, follow these steps, you should be all right. <laughs>